ready on that? Right Good afternoon, everybody. The mic's working? Are they working? Okay, thank you. Welcome to the Public Works Committee meeting for last day, February 28th, 2017. First order business is roll call and determination of quorum. Brenda, please. Doyle. Here. Estes. Solomon. Here. Drew. Here. Nordstrom. We have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Next order of business is to adopt the agenda. Do I have any, any changes or I would entertain a motion to I'll adopt? Make a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion by Solomon, second by Drew. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Agenda is adopted. We are now at general public comment. I do see no general public comment forms, nor do I see people waving at me to have a few minutes at the mic, so we'll go ahead and move on to consent items 1 through 13. Again, seeing no speaker request forms, I will open and close public comment, move on to consent items 1 through 13, if there are any. Mr. Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to pull item 9 and 10. 9 and 10. Any others? If not, I would entertain a motion oh, to adopt the balance. Me, Chair, uh, I'm going to pull 13, just 13? to acknowledge. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to adopt the balance of the consent calendar, less 9, 10, and 13. Make that so I have a motion by Nordstrom, second by Solomon. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Consent calendar less items 9, 10, and 13 is now adopted. Thanks, everybody. We're now to item number nine, which is to authorize mayor and finance officer to sign an amended land use agreement between the city of Rapid City and Central States Fair, Inc. to various parcels surrounding the Pennington County Fairgrounds, including the polo fields. Mr. Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I may ask a question to our Parks and Rec Director, please. Bigler. Mr. Bigler, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, uh, uh, just <clears throat> these are just more inquiry questions. But on the on the polo fields, uh, if we were to, to uh, make this agreement, who's going to manage the you know usage, I guess, of that field when it when Central States Fair is not using it? Is it still going to be the Parks Department? Uh, no, it will be the Central States okay. Fair, although if there's a, a, an event or some other use that comes up, uh, we would work with them to see if that's something that would fit within their, uh, within their uh, uh, schedule and if that's something that would be suitable for their use. But okay. yes, they will have control over that area with the, this agreement. Okay. And uh, on item number 10, the, the carpet at the swim center? Yes. How often is that replaced? Well, it's, this is the original carpeting which okay. went in in 2002 when the building was constructed, so it's 15 years old. Yeah. Is there, are there a lot of sopping wet kids that run on that carpet uh, when they're done swimming? I would imagine, yes. And is carpet the best thing to have in that well, situation? So. Or is there a safety issue as to why to have it? No, I don't think so. You know, most of the carpeting is in the, uh, the public areas and not in really the pool areas or the locker rooms, of course. So. Really, the, the wear is due to just daily wear and tear of people walking on it. I don't know how much of it is related to actually wet feet being on the carpeting. Okay. I'll yield the floor. Thank you, Ms. Bigler. All right. Thank you. And we'll reel it back to item number nine. Um, that's all right. <laughs> hey, you know what? He was up there. Get it all out of the way. That's fine. Um, I would entertain a motion on item number nine, please. Second. The Nord uh, motion by Nordstrom, second by Solomon to approve. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Thanks, everybody. Item carries. Item number 10 is to authorize staff to advertise for bids for replacement of carpet at Roosevelt Swim Center in the estimated amount of $65,000. A motion to approve by Solomon, a second by Nordstrom. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item number 10 carries. On to item number 13, which is acknowledgement of the amendment 17-002 to the 2017-2020 to 2020 Transportation Improvement Program. Alderwoman Drew, please. I move to acknowledge the amendment um, to the Transportation Improvement Program. A second. motion by Drew, second by Solomon, Brenda, and you do have the floor. Uh, I yield. That, that's all I needed to do was get it acknowledged. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Item 13 carries. We are now on to non-consent item number 14. Seeing no speaker request forms, public comment is open and closed. Item number 14 is introduction and first reading of ordinance number 6113, an ordinance to amend park use regulations by amending chapter 12.24 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Alderman Solomon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Bigler, make you get your steps in today. All right. as you head up to the uh, podium. Uh, I, re I reviewed it. I appreciate all the work. I think um, taking out some of the, 
more general language and make, making it a little more um, user friendly. I have a question on the hours. So okay. in the winter hours, and I get uh, the safety with, with the, the light, but so for example, right now, if someone went jogging at 5.30 in the morning, they're breaking the law. Is, is there any, uh, with, the, with these proposed changes, is there any flexibility in starting at 5 versus 6 a.m. for the park hours in the off season? Uh, there, there, there could be, actually. Generally, people aren't out during the winter time uh, jogging at, at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. That's why we changed the, uh, the, uh, the hours in the summertime to 5 a.m. because there would be people out earlier. Uh, that's going to be an enforcement issue, and if PD wanted to stop somebody who's jogging at 5 o'clock through one of the parks, they could. Okay. Whether it's something that they would, I, I don't know. Do we send it. out any notices to the public that, that, you know, March 15th has come and the hours are changing from 6 to 5 a.m.? How, how, how do we communicate that with the public of when they can use Well, we don't, but, but in, in the past it's just been daylight so that's a really ambiguous time so we wanted to get something that at least people would know that okay 5 a.m. is is when the parks technically open yeah. uh, so no we don't I mean it was something that we put on our our parks and rec website uh, the hours of operation we do the same thing with the cemetery where we have two different hours of, of, uh, of the cemetery being open depending whether it's winter or summer it used to also be half hour after sunrise, I think was the, and, and we changed that to having an actual time so that people know that if they're going to travel here, is it going to be open or not? So. Yeah. And I appreciate this sure. it being specific because yeah. the, if you're trying to enforce something and you say daylight, that means, does that mean, you know, yeah. what color is the sky at that point? So uh, I will yield the floor. Thank you. Alder Women Drew, please. Thank you. I have questions for Mr. Beekler as well. Can I proceed? Thank you. Um, okay, with the vendors, first of all, thank you for that because we're going to see more of food trucks. I saw there was a noise kind of an ordinance kind of interwoven there with any of the food trucks that you couldn't, as a vendor or a food person, you couldn't have a PA or music going. Um, I don't know, I thought that was kind of weird. I mean, I never see an ice cream truck without um, music. I don't know even know if those are allowed in parks or what the 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 scope of this ordinance is. So maybe you could enlighten me a little bit on, on what you're looking at there. Well, what we're looking at there is to not have uh, not have somebody with a bullhorn saying, hey, come on over here and, and, and have our, you know, sample our wares or ha having uh, large horns or anything like that. I mean, these are, these are going to be located in public areas and public parks. Um, their visual presence is, is welcome. But when it comes to something that could be objectionable to other people using the parks, that's kind of where we, we're drawing the line in this instance. Okay, um, when <coughs> I used to run the Heritage Festival, the South Dakota Depart Department of Health would come through and um, uh, look at all the food vendors. Is that something that's required of all the vendors to have some kind of a seal of approval, so to say, from, from the Department of Health? Uh, yes, that would be something, uh, I think that is uh, required with their business license that they have that. Uh, so that would be something that if they have a business license they would have that and it wouldn't be something that we would be going around and, and enforcing or, or inspecting. So if they apply for a permit, you know, like how long of the time span is there between um, uh, the, do you know, like we had the gal that wanted to do ice cream in the park, I remember a few years ago, right. and it was just, you know, by the time she would have gotten it done, the summer would have been half over and she just right. decided not to. So um, This ordinance, I believe, uh, says that, it, that your request needs to be in about 60 days before you would want to start, and that allows us the, the time to, to uh, do any kind of uh, uh, work that we would have to do to make sure that they fit into the location and that sort of thing. Okay, that's great. And I think, you know, um, like Jason said, maybe a more user-friendly version of this somewhere, you know, like maybe just a checklist for vendors on, on your site would really help them, you know, sort through the jargon, you know, so that they can just see what they have to do. Sure, and that will be part of our internal process for issuing a permit is to work with them and, and to let them know what is required or re requested from them. 
Okay, I also saw that you had insurance requirements. Mm -hmm. um, is that for, I, I just looked at it quickly. I didn't, you know, go mm -hmm. over with a fine tooth comb, but is that for any size event or is there like a minimum, you know, say you're gonna have a picnic for your class reunion or something yeah, like that? This would not affect any of that. This would be for a vendor that wanted to come and bring a booth or a food truck and locate it at a specific oh. location in one of our parks. Let's just say Founders Park, for example, which was a popular location for food trucks for, for the last few years. We will designate an area or areas that will be for a, a, a reserved space, if you will, for a vendor. They can come in and they can request that particular site uh, and that will be their site for that determined amount of time. Uh, so the insurance will be for that uh, vendor to be in the park at that time. So we're so not talking event insurance, we're talking no, vendor insurance here. Correct, correct. Okay, okay, and then one last um, thing that I noticed, uh, you were um, yeah, curtailing the use of golf carts and those kinds of things mm -hmm. in, in the parks. And now, my grandson, who is four, has has a car that is, is you know it, he can get around it by by himself you know it's an electric car and you know he, he drives all around I mean are you gonna I can see families bringing those little cars down to the park and having their kids drive around I, I mean I don't think that was the intent of this of anything in this ordinance we're we're talking about uh, you know, motorized golf carts or or motorcycles or things like that so I I don't think we're going to, to <laughs> To I, <laughs> I just uh, curtail I, the use. I of watch these sport. motorized cars, and I, I I just don't like a four-year-old driving. But you know, anyway, it's just <laughs> something that I thought about that could happen in in our city parks, and I didn't know if that was something that would be. We won't, we won't prohibit those yet. So. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I yield. Alderman Solomon, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. I can get a second and retain the floor. Yes. And just a. Uh, question for Mr. Beegler. So as of right now, are food trucks actually not permitted in our parks? And does this make a way for them to be permitted in our parks? Uh, at this time, we don't have any regulation mm -hmm. to either permit them or deny them. So it's been a real gray area and something that we've wanted to, uh, to address for a while. Uh, there will also be at some point uh, in the near future a food truck ordinance coming from, from I believe, the planning department. Uh, that will also address where they can and cannot be. So we're kind of getting ahead of that and, and, and including uh, the updates to the vendor uh, section in this uh, ordinance that also covers food trucks. Okay, that's all I have, thank you. All right, motion on the floor is to approve item number 14, which is first reading of this ordinance 6113. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion by Nordstrom, second by Drew. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, Aye. same sign. We're adjourned. Thanks, everybody.